Welcome into a special edition of the Future Stocks podcast. My name is Elijah Evans, and I am really excited today to be joined by Riley Gallens, a pitching prospect in the White Sox organization. I'm really pumped to talk to Riley about, you know, just everything from being traded this offseason to then, you know, starting with the organization and then, you know, everything that's been going really well for him in Winston-Salem this year. So how you doing, man? Welcome on. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Uh, you know, it's exciting, right? I think it was a, it was a funky uh, trade that brought you over to the White Sox, right? We, I remember a lot of fans kind of reacting. You know, five five for one trade is not a common thing, right? It was it was a f- weird situation where Aaron Bummer went to the Braves, uh, and you and four other guys, you know, four mostly major league guys or almost major league guys came back to the White Sox. Um, so first of all, you know, what was it like being drafted last year, uh, and then within four months being traded, not only traded but traded to a team in your home state yeah it was uh it was wild and probably the last thing i expected um when i was getting the call like that i was getting traded um it was probably the last thing i thought was gonna happen Um, i thought i was in trouble or did something (laughs) when i'm getting a call from the gm at like midnight and then you pick up and they're like hey man we're sending you to chicago good luck and i probably I had no idea like what to think or what to say right away. But once it's sunk in, you're going home to your hometown, get to play for the home yeah. team, hopefully one day. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's got to be a cool experience, right? I mean, obviously being traded that soon is is a little freaky, uh, but at the same time, like, you know, you are you are, grew up in Illinois, right? You went to L- University of Illinois, right? So it's like, that's a it's a pretty cool experience and something that very few guys uh, get the chance to do. Uh, going back to that time was when you were kind of in high school in Illinois and then playing baseball as well in college, um, did you have any interaction with the White Sox? Were the White Sox kind of on your, were they, were you on their radar? Was it, were you being scouted by them early on? Never really interacted with their scouting department. Um, Maybe when I was younger in college, I can't really remember, Um, but not during any, like not during the draft process this past year, but I did get um, like questionnaires and occasional, occasional emails and stuff from their scouting department, but never anything like one-on-one. So that kind of came as a big surprise to get traded there without much conversation. But I mean, it's, from the area, you know, I'm, I'm assuming I was probably re- a name they were relatively familiar with, you know, going up all the ranks. Um, so that's probably kind of how it went down. Yeah, I assume you were on the radar as well, but it's interesting that you never, you know, really d- talked to them directly because I think often you look for guys in, in trades that are, you know, looked at by a front office at some point pretty directly, I think. Um, so that's interesting, yeah. especially being an Illinois guy that you weren't on the exact draft radar. Um, that's pretty fascinating. But yeah. so you played at you played at University of Illinois for a while, um, you know, local in down in Champaign. Uh, what are some of the things you really learned being in Illinois and that have helped you kind of get to where you are today now? Yeah. Um, I mean, my career at Illinois was anything but smooth sailing. Um, you know, I, I tore my, I got Tommy John surgery in my freshman year, which carried into my sophomore year, was supposed to come back. But then that was the COVID year. So it gets cut short. So I ended up not playing until my third year there. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of time away from the game. Gave me a lot of perspective on what life's like without baseball um, at the, at the head of your life. Um, so that was good to go through that. Uh, I think it kind of shaped me for some of the struggles I would eventually have at Illinois. Um, You know, I had a really good pitching coach there who developed me as a pitcher, but also developed me as like a young man um, and trying to mold me into the person I am now. Um, So I'm grateful for that. And that taught me a lot of lessons. Um, But yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great time there. Um, I I felt like I got better each year as a pitcher. Maybe I didn't get the results I wanted um, when you look at the stat sheet at the end of the year, but it definitely put me in a good position entering pro ball where I'm at mentally and physically right now. Yeah, that's pretty cool to hear. Um, so, I mean, it's obviously going through all of that. Your first few years of school is, is a big adjustment for, for a young player, especially. Um, what was kind of some of the the parts of the Tommy John recovery, especially like uh, that's something that, you know, these days it's more advanced than it used to be, right? Like it's not necessarily what it, it once was, but what are some of the aspects of that recovery um, that were that were challenging for you maybe and things that you kind of got better, honestly, as a pitcher through that recovery? Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the actual recovery process was relatively smooth sailing. Um, I had some soreness here and there, but never anything too terrible. Um, my biggest issue was when I came back to pitching, it had just been so long. I, so I tore my elbow at the end of my senior year of high school. It was a partial tear, and Illinois kind of wanted me to rehab it without surgery to see if we could do it that way. Didn't end up working. So I, by the time I had actually played in the game, it was like, 850 plus days since I'd been on a mound. Yeah. Um, so like just getting used to pitching again and throwing and like all like the basic stuff that comes with pitching 
that I'd lost um, in those three years of absence. Um, so I'd say more on the back end of my recovery was probably the hardest, like just getting used to the game again and the flow um, when you're on the field. But the actual recovery process physically was pretty good. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting that you say that. I mean, that's a, that's a long layoff. I think a lot of guys go through, you know, whatever it is, usually 400 to 500 days, kind of that, that average recovery, but 800 something days of basically not playing a game is, is, is a lot to manage. And, and yeah. once you're getting used to getting back on the mound, um, once you were kind of entering draft season um, at the end of your career in Illinois, uh, what was that process like uh, talking with the Braves and then just getting drafted? Did you know kind of when you were about to get drafted or was it a little out of nowhere? Uh, so I knew coming into the season – you know, I was on the draft board for a lot of teams, had t- talked with a lot of orgs um, leading up to the season, had a fairly solid like first six or seven weeks of my fifth year season. And then I pulled my oblique and kind of struggled the back half of that season. I missed about a month of time. And then when I came back, I just was kind of a shell of myself um, and struggled down the stretch. And so I kind of wasn't sure what the draft looked like. You know, I'd gotten some phone calls. I'd heard from some teams, but I wasn't positive that I was going to get picked. Um, but then I went to the draft league over the summer when I got healthy. And like a week before the draft, a lot of teams reached out talking money, talking all that stuff. So I kind of knew at that point that it was going to hopefully happen, or at least was going to get an opportunity in some capacity. But I wasn't sure uh, what round, what, what team, anything like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's uh, that's interesting. Kind of the the ups and downs of, of figuring out when you might be getting drafted is is what I've I've talked to a lot of guys in the org about. Like it's it's a really crazy process those few days yeah. when the draft is going on for sure. Um, I'm glad I you, never have to go through it again. Yeah, yeah. I think almost everybody is, except the guys who go really early, maybe. Um, yeah. But uh. Once you were drafted, uh, what were some of the immediate things before the trade uh, that you started to work on um, just in your game and your pitching developing with with the Braves organization? Yeah, um, a lot of it had to do with off speed um, and small mechanical adjustments. um, But, you know, I think the good thing about pro baseball is they are drafting you and they see a vision for you. And they're not necessarily, for the most part, trying to switch everything up the second you get there. Like they draft you because they like you and then they fine tune stuff. Um, So for me, that was trying to throw my slider a tick harder. You know, I'm not a big sweeper guy. I'm more of like a gyro-y short kind of slider guy. So being able to throw that pitch harder is definitely more beneficial. So that was a key. Um, fine tuning the change up, which was like my third pitch, pretty inconsistent. That was kind of the goal. Um, and just overall command. You know, I think uh, yeah. in college you get into trouble when you're in 2-1 counts, 3-1 counts, 2-0 counts, 1-0 and so just learning to control the count with all of your pitches, including off speed, uh, I feel like that's a really big pushing point for pro organizations once you get into pro ball. Yeah, definitely. That's that's an important factor for, for a lot of guys, I think, when they get drafted is immediately finding that the variability of all your different pitches and how to use them uh, in different yeah. counts to, to get ahead. Um, once you came over to the White Sox organization, that was November, um, yeah. We so I've talked to a lot of different guys about Brian Bannister and kind of this new. There's a whole yeah. new regime of pitching and just the guys that are at the helm of just the pitching development and the staff of the organization. Are there any things? Are there any particular things they kind of started tweaking in terms of your pitches once you came over to the Sox org? So they didn't really tweak anything with the fastball slider. Um, that is my go-to, it's my one-two yeah. right now. And they were like, "What you're doing with that is good. Like, just focus on the location. Keep having confidence in it." The changeup, you know, we've messed around with some grips because it's kind of my third, fourth pitch. So that we want to kind of figure out a way to maybe make that a plus pitch at some point. Um, but the biggest thing they did for me was they showed me a curveball. And the way my fastball plays, it plays up in the zone. It's a low vertical approach angle and it plays up in the zone. So having a curveball to kind of throw off that, which I've never had, is a really big reason why I think I'm seeing some of the results I'm getting so far this season. And that was, yeah, that was coordinators, pitching coaches, you know, we've been working on it ever since I got traded and moved over here. And it's been a really big pitch for me. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I, I've noticed the curveball uh, play up pretty well in some of the starts I've watched in Winston this year. What would you say kind of now that you're in this season and you, you have added that curveball, you're still messing with the change up a little bit. Um, what do you think is around your kind of breakdown of what you're throwing uh, in terms of how often you're throwing all those pitches? So I'm um, right now, I'm probably in the 50, 60% fastball. Um, and I think, you know, the goal with that, as you move up the ranks, hopefully you play harder competition, that's right. probably going to have to shrink a little bit, yeah. um, but it plays up really well. So that's my go-to probably about 25% slider. And then the last, whatever that is, 25% mix between changeup and curveball. Yeah, that's about what I was going to say. I've noticed, I was thinking around 50 fastball, 25 yeah. slider, um, yeah. but you feel like, you feel like that curveball's kind of taken some things to the next notch in general. 
Yeah, and like maybe it's not necessarily a pitch I'm throwing 30 times a game, but when I do throw it, it's really effective, and it helps yeah. my fastball play up later into the game. You know, in that yeah. sixth, seventh inning, you don't want to be cornered to just throw only off speed because they've seen your, your heater now three, four times. You want to be able to still yeah. throw that and have confidence that you can get it. Yeah, and mix it in. Uh, is there any locations with those pitches that you kind of have, have learned since college at least? Is there anything you've learned to throw in different spots and or counts? fastballs up as opposed to down you know in yeah. college i feel like there's the common hey man we're gonna throw the ball low in the zone we're gonna paint the knees and like i understand that's the old homage of baseball but i got a riding heater and that thing should be at the top rail every single time and you know that's in my bullpens i'm trying to go middle up or above the zone every single time with the heater and then off speed it's not necessarily like any certain location just down you know yeah. like it doesn't it's not oh down and glove side it's just down lower third or below the zone because when I leak, I think most of the home runs I've given up this year and extra base hits are on breaking balls that have just leaked middle up and yeah. those get burned in, in Pro Bowl. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. I think uh, I think you see a lot more uh, of the prospects in this system and in general just around baseball that are that are using their riding fastballs just really high in the zone and, yeah. and it works, right? If you can get those pitches in the top corners, especially, like that's what is getting leading to a lot of success for guys. Yeah. Um, what are some things like – Okay, in terms of in terms of counts, right, and just at bats and the way you're approaching guys right now, what are some of the biggest differences with the hitters you're facing, you know, this year in high A versus last year in your first rookie ball single A games and then going back to college too? Yeah, um, I mean, I definitely think pro ball in college, in my opinion, is a really different game. Like, it's hard to compare the two because college, there's such like an approach. Like, the, there's so many different types of players in a lineup. Pro ball, I feel like, you know, there's a few different types of guys. You have a couple slap and dash guys, but most of the dudes are just trying to go gap to gap home run these days. Um, you know, and when I was in rookie ball in low A last year, there was definitely less or way more chase um, at pitches outside the zone. Like here, you got to establish your stuff before they'll chase. And I'm sure that it gets even harder to get chases the higher up you go. Um, but I've noticed like if you're 1-0, you know, you're kind of battling – not whereas maybe in low A rookie ball, you go one oh, it's like I can throw a fastball and I'm probably back to one one. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's that that difference in the in the counts and understanding how to manipulate it, right? Yeah. Um, not to I'm gonna I'm gonna toot your horn a little bit here. Um, you know, you've got sixty three strikeouts this season across, you know, fifty five and a third, you know, only nineteen walks, just a, a balance of command and also, you know, the strikeout stuff. Those those two games in May, uh, you had back to back games with with ten strikeouts and then eleven strikeouts, both in seven innings. Um, how comfortable do you feel, you know, working a full six, seven inning game? And, and also what do you think in those games in particular was working? for you so well i love it um you know i, I think t obviously there are going to be some days when you just have everything going and those are the days you got to take advantage of okay i have four pitches going i need to get through six or seven here like this is a good day i have to find a way to get through it um and there are going to be days when you're struggling and you're like i got to find a way to get four or five innings but on those days when i'm going deeper you know i just feel like i have better feel this year compared to past years of off-speed pitches you know, in the sixth, seventh inning, if I haven't thrown a righty a changeup yet and I all of a sudden start throwing changeups to righties, that definitely you, – the, the dugout's like, whoa, what was that pitch? Like, what we got to worry about that now. You know, you just put extra stuff in their head. Um, so having all those options, the deeper you get into the game, you know, it, being able to flash those options, I feel like has helped me kind of get deep. Yeah, and then, uh, and then this past week – uh, you know, on Sunday, you went eight innings, only two hits, six Ks, no walks. Um, that's another game where, like, I think it's cool to see the progression of, of command, not just stuff, right? Because yeah, I think it, yeah. that's something that really matters at the lower levels is developing a consistency where you're not walking a lot of guys on a given day and you're yeah. pounding the zone. Um, what are some of the, the big keys? I know you kind of just hit on it too, but what are some of the big keys behind that command just continually getting better for you this season? Yeah, um, I mean, right now we're throwing on a seven-day rotation. Right. Um, so I have the ability to get two bullpens in per week as opposed to one. If you're on a five or six day, you know, you're not yeah. going to touch the mound that many times. So I'm, I have the luxury of being able to touch the mound multiple times throughout the week. And the focus every single time you touch the mound for me is commanding your pitches where you want it to go. Um, specifically the fastball. If you have your fastball command, the odds are, you know, you might not have all three off speed pitches going, but if you have one going that plays off your fastball command, you have a chance to have a really good day. Um, so just really commanding the heater, you know, that's the yeah. biggest thing. 
start by pounding it early and then you can mix in everything else from there. Yeah. Um, being in this, this organization now and kind of your first spring training with the White Sox and everything, um, what is the general feel just in this farm system about, you know, where things are at right now? I think especially on the pitching side of things, uh, on our podcast, we've been talking for, for weeks now about just how deep the pitching is. There's guys at every single level that are, that are really impressive right now. What are some of the things you notice just in spring training and then starting the season of just the general sense of, of the pitching throughout the, the White Sox org? Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell there's an excitement about the farm system right now and where it's going to go. Um, I mean, the I obviously wasn't here in the past, so I don't know what it was like, but I've heard that we have a bunch of new staff members, coordinators, pitching guys, hitting guys, everything, and the culture they're creating is really, really good. Um, and on top of it, you just have some insanely talented arms in, in the farm system. I mean, you look at that Birmingham rotation. Those guys are – those guys are – uh, for me, you know, it's it's awesome to be able to be around those guys in spring training because they're such professionals right. and they know exactly what they're doing. They know the type of pitchers they are and they know what their strengths are. So you get to see them work. It's like, all right, I got to find a way to kind of be like those guys. Um, yeah. So having dudes like that that are just so dominant sets the precedent for the rest of the farm system. Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of the guys at Winston, I mean, the Birmingham guys like that rotation is probably the best in minor league baseball right now, which is pretty crazy. Um, in terms of the guys you're, you've been with, you know, this season from the start of the year till right now, um, what is there anybody in Winston that you kind of have, have latched onto or just kind of become tight with in a way where you're learning from them and, and vice versa? Yeah, I mean, our, our our pitching staff is pretty tight. I think we got a really good clubhouse here. Um, and the thing that I love about our ro- our starting rotation, at least, we're all, I feel like, pretty different pitchers. Yeah. You know, you go down the line, you got a guy like Paulette who has just disgusting off-speed stuff, can spin the hell out of everything. He's pitching his own way. Murphy's going to go pitch backwards to everybody. You know, Schweitzer was just kind of – he was a lefty command guy who had everything and just competed his balls off out there. Schultz and Duke McDougal are just absolute flamethrowers. I know they're now gone. So a couple of them are gone. But, yeah, um, no, you know, sure. it's just – it's a wide variety of pitchers. So getting to see how they all work is – is really, really good. Um, and obviously, you know, we're throwing every day. I get to see everyone's stuff. I get to see, oh, Schultz, how do you throw your stupid good slider? Yeah. And, you know, not that I'll ever throw one like that, but <laughs> being able to have those conversations with kind of the high high profile guys is, is really good for my development, at least. And I'm sure everyone else. Yeah. And I'm sure, yeah, vice versa too. Like it just yeah. in general, sharing all your or thoughts with guys. I mean, you have those many guys that are that many guys that are talented like that. It makes it a uh, cool to just learn from each other. How, how crazy is it? Like the way you just mentioned Noah Schultz. I just want to ask like, how crazy is it looking at the way he pitches and imagining a six, nine dude that size, like coming down the mound that way? Like it's, it's pretty ridiculous to watch even just it's, as a spectator. It's even crazier. Cause he's just like, such a chill guy. You're yeah. like, oh, this is just like a chill, goofy six nine guy. And then he goes out there and he's just ninety seven with his slider wherever he wants it. Like it's it's insane watching that guy throw. It's pretty crazy stuff. Um, you know, how about the some of the hitters in the system? Is there anybody that you know, or any just just in general, the guys uh, watching in, in spring training or even throwing against some of the other prospects in the system? Uh, anybody that's kind of stuck out to you uh, on your roster or just in spring training in general? Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel like there are a lot of really good. Uh, batters in this in this farm system. Um, I didn't get a chance to see a ton. I threw one live at bat in, and then we went right into playing other teams. So I didn't get to kind of face a ton of our guys. Um, but in terms of like Winston, like the guys I get to watch, I mean Gonzalez. Obviously, he's he's such a pro. He's a pro as pro. Yeah. Um, same emotion, no matter what's going on, good or bad. Uh, gonna have good abs ninety nine percent of the time. Um, so watching him. His operation's really impressive. Um, we got a lot of other guys, though, in this lineup that are really solid. You know, you look at Bryce Willits, Sean Gusenberg. Um, we just got Eddie Eddie Park, Mario Camaletti. A lot of guys are just grind at bats, and you just know we're going to put up a good one every time they go up there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's that's exactly right. I think a lot of the a lot of the guys in the system that you see. This, there's this level of plate approach, I think, that I've noticed watching you know, many different minor league systems, the teams this year, of just the guys in the org are just are fighting, and there's good at bats, and it's, it just looks like guys were taking smart, intelligent at bats almost every time they yeah. get up to the plate, which is yeah. really exciting from from an organizational perspective for sure. Um, off the field a little bit, we'll take it away from baseball for a sec. Um, I know you talked about kind of your personal growth in college uh, and everything else throughout the last few years. Is there anything? What are the things uh, you like to do? Kind of anything you you enjoy um, when you're not playing baseball? Uh, I like to like to play cards. Um, you know, I, sometimes I, I like to hop in the card games, but sometimes, you know, if the stakes are a little too high for me. <laughs> I'll sit out. But those are, that's a good time. Um, you know, I'm a pretty simple guy. I, I like going to the field. I like playing baseball and 
that's kind of really about it. I like to hang out with the dudes in the clubhouse, but when I'm back, you know, I kind of just look forward to doing it again the next day. Um, yeah. But in the, in the off season, I'm back in Chicago. So I get to kind of, I'm, I'm around there. I get to enjoy, you know, the nice city, but I'm not really looking to do anything too crazy most of the time. Yeah, that's cool. I'm surprised you didn't say golf. I feel like golf's the, the instant answer from almost everybody, but you know, everyone's trying to get me. I've, oh, I've really? never golfed around in my life and wow, everyone just tell me like, dude, like, you got to learn how to golf if you're going to be a pitcher. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll figure that's, it out at some point. That's what everybody tells me. I mean, that's what I hear from all the different pitchers is, you know, golf, golf, golf. And I, I just started playing recently myself. So I, I get it. It's not a, not for everyone immediately, but you might, you might get pulled in at some point. Yeah. Um, for all of our, all of our listeners, we, we got a lot of Illinois guy, people that are, uh, that are White Sox fans in general. What was your, uh, your go-to spot down in Champaign? Oh, um, Best breakfast spot, Mary Ann's, no doubt. Um, it's a diner, famous diner. Um, pizza spot, Papa Dell's. It's like a Chicago deep dish style pizza joint. Um, God, I mean, they got a lot of spots. I was a, I was a big sushi guy. I'd always hit Sakanaya, which is a big time sushi on Green Street. But, I mean, you can't go wrong there. It's a good college town, a lot of good spots. Definitely, definitely a good college town. I've spent, I've spent a handful of weekends down there. It's a, it's yeah. a fun time for sure. Um, Almost too fun. Sometimes. Yeah, right. Going into kind of the rest of the the rest of the season, we'll wrap on this. Just what are some of your big goals? You know, you've got what it's it's the middle of June. Uh, you've got two and a half months or so uh, at high A, at least for the for the season right now. What are some of the goals you really have for yourself just just to finish out this year strong? Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, one of, one of the best pieces of advice I got from my college pitching coach um, when I made the transition to pro ball, he just reminded me, you know, be where your feet are. And I think it's easy, you know, right now to be like, oh, I'd love to, you know, finish the year at this level, this level, you know, I'd love to finish with these stats and these strikeouts and all that stuff. But, you know, I just, I, I love my job. I love showing up to the field every day. So the, the main goal is just be where my feet are every single day. And I have a good feeling, you know, if you continue to do that, that you'll be where you want to be at the end of the season. So yeah. I'm just trying to be where I'm at for every day for the rest of the season. That's, that's the great mindset and it's working for you right now. So uh, keep it up. We look forward to, to seeing where everything goes for you. It's a, it's really exciting to see a, an Illinois guy thriving in the system right now. And, uh, and we really appreciate you taking the time to, to get fans a chance to know you a little bit today. Yeah. Thank you for having me.